The American dream, the land of opportunity, the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness. All lies, I tell you. Welcome guys, Assalamu Alaikum. I'm Saira the Musafir, and about two years ago, my husband and I decided to get a refund on our American dream, and we've been traveling the world full-time with our kids ever since. And since I started posting on YouTube, many of you have questioned that choice and asked, why would you give up on the American dream? Why would you leave all of that behind? So today, I'm sharing the reasons behind that decision, and this is a decision actually that a lot of people, Muslim and non-Muslims, are making to leave the West behind and move abroad to travel full-time or just move to a different country and live there instead. Later on in the video, I'll also talk about how much it cost us to travel as a family of four full-time in our first year of travel. So if you are considering full-time travel or moving abroad, watch till the end so you can get that cost of living kind of breakdown. Before I go any further, I do want to acknowledge the huge sacrifices and efforts that my dad, my mom, my grandparents made as immigrants coming from India and Pakistan to the United States or to England in my grandparents' case. And they all worked really hard to give us a really beautiful life here. So I do understand that there is a ton of privilege and I am very grateful to all of them. I am a first generation American, born and raised, and I honestly thought I would live in California for my whole life. And now that I think about it, it's actually kind of crazy that I am also the third consecutive generation to do this kind of move, whether you want to call it a hijra or just a movement because my grandparents actually moved from India to Pakistan um, as young adults and kids actually in 1947 and then my dad and my my mom too they came to the United States in the 80s around 1985 and they've been here there ever since and so I'm the third generation my husband and I to then make a big cross-continental move to the other side of the world as well so maybe it's a family tradition that I'm following also, when I told my family and friends, we had some very interesting mixed reactions. Why you want to leave me? All coming from a place of love and caring, and I do appreciate all of my family and friends. I love you guys. But we got questions like, um, are you okay? Are you in some kind of legal trouble? Do you need help getting out of the country fast? And also like, you're too young to be having a midlife crisis. Like, what are you doing? So I know it's definitely a hard pill to swallow, especially in any kind of immigrant community when your kids, your adult kids decide to do this hippie nomadic life thing. And like I said, I do understand it's a huge privilege to have US citizenship and a lot of people are still trying and do still want to come to the United States. Um, it's still seen as a land of opportunity. I fully feel like that's more of a myth. It's more of a rat race than anything else and your quality of life is so diminished compared to so many other parts of the world. And the things that people value and prioritize, such as family and health and quality time to do the things that you love instead of chasing the almighty dollar, these are all things that are just expected in American culture, that hustle culture that is so toxic. So anyway, one day we just decided we didn't wanna do it anymore, we didn't wanna live in the United States, and here is why. Number one, the US public policy. This has not sit well with us for some time, even well before all of the tragic situation that has come about in like the last five to six months in Palestine. But it is nauseating being a part and parcel complicit in the actions of your country's foreign policy just by living there. Oh, and also fun fact, if you are a US citizen, you have to continue paying federal taxes no matter where you go in the world, even if you decide to leave the United States. Um, so at least we were able to minimize or stop paying our state taxes in California, which are also very high. Um, but no matter where you go, until you give up your US citizenship, you still have to continue paying taxes. And unfortunately, I am not in a position where I can just give up citizenship um, at the moment. Even when you are uh, giving up your US citizenship, they even tax you for that because it's the United States and they will tax you at absolutely every opportunity possible. 
All right, my next point, public education is not great pretty much in all of the United States, but especially in California. And this is coming from somebody who has seen the ins and outs of schools and districts and the decisions they've made over time because I am a teacher. And if you look into the history of the United States public education system, believe it or not, the public school system and the prison system in the United States were built on the same model and foundations. Essentially, they're designed to churn out cookie cutter people who are gonna be paper pushers and just another cog in the machine. And the curriculum and quality of education is really mediocre at best. Depending on where you live, Islamic school is also an option, but it is also a pretty hefty financial commitment and we really wanted to homeschool our kids and that was one of the reasons actually we wanted to make this change is to be able to have a higher quality of life and be able to spend more than just like two hours a day with our kids because of how busy they are with school and extracurriculars and we are with working full-time two full-time working adults so we really wanted to homeschool our kids and for that i would need to quit my full-time job as a teacher of course and homeschooling them has been absolutely phenomenal phenomenal alhamdulillah we love it um but that also brings me to my next point that you kind of have to have a dual income especially in california and it is so expensive Expensive. Like it is bonkers pricey. It is ridiculous for the same amount of money that we can order food as a family of four in Malaysia or like here in Pakistan That's how much you would pay for like one person in California in the Bay Area For example, check out this house in Palo Alto, California. That is less than 2,000 square feet Maybe like two bedrooms listed for four million dollars and it is definitely going to be sold for higher than asking price guaranteed but yeah california and the u.s in general has become so expensive inflation is out of control and alhamdulillah i'm very grateful that my husband and i were able to cover all of our monthly expenses but between gas and groceries and your mortgage and, and health insurance, it feels like you're just bleeding money all the time. Oh, and here's another fun fact. Did you know that the word mortgage literally means mort as in death and gauge, which is grip? And if you ever look at that number about how much you would end up paying for your mortgage payment by the end of that 15 or 30 year term, yeah, it definitely feels like a death grip. And our fourth reason for wanting to leave the United States is in general the culture and environment. It is so different from when I was growing up as a kid and we would literally be able to just play outside right in front of our house in the street with all the kids from the neighborhood. And now because of safety issues and the crazy stories that you hear, like you can't even think about sending your kid to play outside unsupervised. Major downtown areas of cities like San Francisco, Sacramento, Los Angeles have become like dilapidated ghost towns. And there's entire like shant like streets just uh, that are just tent cities for homeless people. There's a shoplifting, there's garbage in the streets, there's car theft. Gun culture and like intolerance and Islamophobia have really skyrocketed and gone out of control in the post-pandemic times. For example, CARE reported almost 50% as many Islamophobic incidents from October 7th to December of 2023 as they did in all of 2022. I'm obviously not saying that all people are bad and racist. I actually have really, really great non-Muslim friends and colleagues who are so welcoming and supportive and kind, but in general, the trend and shift towards actual outward violence towards visibly Muslim people is kind of shocking and alarming. And it kind of feels like the collapse of a civilization is in imminent. So that's why we left. And honestly, the only downsides is how much I miss my family and friends. Um, and I miss really good Mexican food in California. Oh, and these hippies chips that are just hella good. I usually don't like anything that's vegan, but these are really good. And if you're in the United States, go get some. So now, how much does it actually cost as a family of four for us to travel full time? I could go on and on about how much our quality of life has improved since we left the United States. Instead, I'll save myself and you guys some time and just get right into the cost of living difference. So we've slow traveled through eight countries so far throughout Europe and mostly Asia. And this average cost of living is pretty true for most uh, like Balkan, Mediterranean, Eastern European countries and most Asian countries. So definitely don't expect this to be the cost of living if you go to like Switzerland or France or Japan or something like that. 
So in the United States, in California, in a kind of middle class suburb of Sacramento, we spent on average at least $11,000 per month. And you could easily expect to spend four to $7,000 more if you lived in more expensive parts of California, like the San Francisco Bay Area or Los Angeles. And the moment you've been waiting for since we started traveling, our monthly average cost of living for a family of four is $3,500 a month. And that's the total. That includes groceries, transportation costs, restaurants and touristy stuff, going to the movies, extracurricular drop-in classes for the kids, and yes, even healthcare and rent. Our rent averages around $1,500 a month. There are some places where it's been a little more expensive like Greece and Turkey, but if you also uh, do a long-term year-long rental instead of a short-term vacation rental like us, you would be spending a, even like, a lot less, like even less than $1,500 a month on your rent. On flights last year, we spent about $7,600, and that's hopping around different countries, different continents, and that might still seem like a lot to you, um, but compared to how much we were spending in California, like it's, it's an astonishing difference. There's this one saying that I'll never forget, and it is that you basically only have 18 summers with your kids, so you should make them count. And I am so grateful that we've had the opportunity to do full-time travel, increase our quality of life, increase the amount of time that we can spend together as a family, and choose to spend our time, money, and efforts on things that matter more to us, to our health, and to experiences, and making memories that we'll cherish for years to come, inshallah. So I hope that gives you an idea of how much or how little it actually takes to travel the world full time with your kids. And you might even actually end up spending a lot less than this if you decide to just move to one country and settle in one place and make that your home base instead of the digital nomad hopping around countries thing that we did. Speaking of settling down, please do subscribe to my channel because I might have some news to share with you guys in the near future regarding that. If you too are thinking about leaving the US and either moving abroad or traveling full time, um, check out the link in the description below for my other video on my five steps of how to travel full time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, fellow Masafers, Assalamu Alaikum.